Over two years since the launch of the I Want to Live project, over 40,000 Russian soldiers have requested to surrender despite resistance from Russian intelligence agencies. The press service of the I Want to Live Unified Center for receiving appeals of Russian military servicemen for surrender reported the information. In the two years since its launch, we have received 40,157 requests on all channels, Telegram, WhatsApp, Chatbot and the hotline. The statement said, the number continues to grow in real time, despite persistent efforts by Russian special services to oppose and hinder such actions. Regardless of the situation on the front line, operations to evacuate Russian servicemen who have voluntarily surrendered continue uninterrupted and are consistently carried out by our operatives. On average, every two days, we evacuate members of the Russian armed forces to the Ukrainian side. The I Want to Live project emphasized the organization further emphasized that the I Want to Live project serves as a vital guarantee for preserving the lives of Russians who are being forced by the Kremlin regime to choose between dying under fire from the Ukrainian military or being killed by their own for refusing to fight. Earlier, the I Want to Live project reported that the hotline for the state program of voluntary surrender is receiving more direct calls from Russian soldiers themselves rather than from their relatives. Despite Russian forces appearing to have seized the initiative on the front line, the drastic figures reflect a persisting suggestion that morale among Putin's forces remains low. Tens of thousands of Russian soldiers have been used in suicidal human wave attacks throughout the war, and US officials have suggested that some Russian commanders are executing those who refuse to join in. Captured Russians can be swapped for Ukrainian prisoners of war, some of whom will have been subjected to brutal torture. In Ukraine, Russian prisoners of war are treated comparatively better as the authorities work hard to convene to the Geneva Convention on the Treatment of Prisoners of War, which includes offering three hot meals a day and allowing them to communicate with family back home. In Russia's Bryansk region, a weapons arsenal may have been attacked on the night of October 9th. The warehouse allegedly housed ammunition from North Korea and guided aerial bombs, according to Andriy Kovalenko, the head of the Center for Countering Disinformation at the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine. According to Kovalenko, the 67th arsenal of the main missile and artillery directorate of Russia's Ministry of Defense, located near the city of Karachev in the Bryansk region, was hit. The site is approximately 114 kilometers from the Ukrainian border. The head of the Center for Countering Disinformation said the warehouse contained ammunition, including supplies from North Korea, as well as guided aerial bombs. I should note that some of these were stored in the open air, Kovalenko said. In September, Ukrainian forces attacked two large arsenals containing missiles and shells in Russia's Tver region, as well as an important ammunition depot in the Krasnodar region. On the night of October 9, explosions were reported in the Bryansk region. Online sources mentioned a fire with detonation and shared corresponding footage. The regional governor confirmed a drone attack. There were also reports that the 67th arsenal of the main missile and artillery directorate of Russia's Ministry of Defense was hit. Ukrainian forces have not yet commented on the night explosions in Russia. Пали вы нахуй, запустили нахуй. Ну да.